So we all want to strike the ball crisp and consistent. Today I'm going to share with you a couple of key things to ensure that happens. And it happens through the bag with all clubs. What I want to talk to you about today is a situation that came up with one of my students called Cray and how he was moving in terms of his pivot and his arms that caused him real issues with contact and also direction. What tended to happen was he tended to cut across the golf ball because of his backswing pivot, and how his arms responded to that. So I want to share with you today what we did to change his fortunes and get his contact and direction far more consistent within minutes. So the main issue Craig had was during his backswing, his pelvis tended to go a little bit away from target and his spine, and how I talked about it was his upper and lower hub. Now, basically what I'm talking about, if you'd like, is your belt buckle here and your sternum. So in the backswing, his belt buckle would travel away from the ball and his sternum would travel towards the golf ball. So he ended up in what we would call a reverse spine. Almost a reverse pivot if you like, but it wasn't like a complete move like this, but certainly the centers of his body were more this way than this way. So we talked about trying to change that relationship in his backswing. And indeed, when he had his spine working this way, what tended to happen was his arms got very upright. And as he started down, which is the crucial fact, his shoulder got too forward and he got level with his hip. Really, as soon as he started that transition area of the golf swing, really what we're trying to do here is affect the transition by having a better backswing move. And that's the critical part. All great golfers as they start down would have what we call this little separation phase. In Craig's case, he didn't have that because of the way he wound up in the backswing. So the backswing was gonna give us lots of freebies in the downswing to help him control his contact, his low point, and also deliver the club on a more neutral path or plane or arc. His numbers were he was hitting down on the ball eight to nine degrees, which is really excessive and the ball flight was going off really low and he had some really poor contacts as well within that. And when the ball flight got going, the ball had a lot of curve left to right because he was cutting across the golf ball six degrees or so. So the shape of his golf swing on the way down would be down and across far too much. Caused by this pivot, which then linked to his arms and linked to his transition. So we always use the phrase, and one of my great friends uses this phrase a lot, we work away from the problem to fix the problem. And working on his kind of initial move of his pivot in his backswing was the key thing to change his fortunes and also will help you in your fortunes. So if you tend to have inconsistent contact or cut across the golf ball, don't generate enough power, these things will help you. One of the first things I talked about with Craig was getting the ball and try and make it non-golf. So get a ball, put it on your chest like this. And if you were gonna just pass that ball to someone over here, how would your pivot move? How would, you, how would your body respond to that? And we basically talked about, okay, see how I'm leaning more to this side. I'm getting what we would class as more forward bend and less extension or left bend. So he was getting too much of those things. And we do want some of those things in the golf swing for sure. But we need to feel that this ball is going to the right of my belt buckle. And if anything, my belt buckle needs to feel it goes a little bit towards target. But if I said to him, just throw that ball like a rugby pass, American football pass, whatever you'd want to do, just a little pop throw, see how your body automatically does what we want. So we tried to take it away from golf and try to make it into a normal task or skill that we would all do in the backyard or we've done as kids that we could just all relate to. Let me show you how we put that into a bit more of a golf context as well. So in terms of hitting golf balls, what I talked to him about was using the rod on the ground here and trying to feel that his zip or his buttons on his top got on top of that rod on the ground. So we just felt, and we did some slow swings, just feeling that the pivot worked more down and across. And we felt that the hips responded to that rather than were activated. So as I move here and I need more rotation, my hips will turn more, but we're not trying to sway the hips. We're trying to feel the hips are quite centered or if ending move towards target, almost like bum to target. Depending on how much range of movement he needed, we'd add more in. But this simple visual on the ground was the key starting point after we did the medicine ball throws and just moving a ball around. 
So once we got them to have a few practice swings, we then worked that into, okay, can we hit a few shots just feeling we get that different pivot? And all of a sudden, what happened was his numbers started to change. And I'm not a coach by numbers. I'm not an accountant, but his path started to move less from out to in and more neutral. His arm swing started to get a little lower, but we also did something for his arms, which I'll share with you now. And his angle of approach, instead of being like eight, nine down, was more like four down, which is kind of tour average. So we want to take these nice little crispy divots after the ball, but they're not going to be super huge or super deep. That's what you would have got before. And again, hitting a driver with these kind of numbers would be really, really miserable. And you're certainly not going to find a lot of fairways or drop your scores down. So the next thing we did was looked at his arms. Let me share what we did with his arms. So with his arms, we took a rod and we stuck it in his armpit like this. Get the rod, obviously, trying to stay level or horizontal. Then what we did in the backswing is got him to feel, okay, keep that rod. Keep that rod, just let your lead arm just touch it at the top of the swing. And keeping that rod kept the connection of his arms and got him a slightly flatter, deeper look to his arm swing, which in turn then helped the backswing. In practice swings, we also got him to feel, could he keep his lead arm on that stick? And keeping that lead arm on that stick also helped to shallow that downswing a little bit too. But that was really the focus only for practice swings. We got him to hit some shots with the rod in. I think it's a great drill for lots and lots of reasons. And this really helped just sink the arms into what we were doing with, you with the pivot. But the pivot would be the key thing on the golf course. We want the golf course to be easy and simple. So on the golf course, I want him to really just be able to go, okay, I'm just gonna concentrate on turning my left shoulder towards my right leg for a right-handed golfer and get behind the golf ball. And then from there, commit to hitting through the ball. And if you had a little fade, but good contact and consistency, that was a key. And we wanted that to progress them through practice to get less of a fade and more of a draw or straight shot. But we certainly got him in practice to hit some shots with the rod in, get nice and level at the start. Can you keep that rod? Just touch it with the lead arm and feel like you would swing like that. And for sure, it feels awkward. It feels restricted, depending on what you currently do. But we want it to influence you. We want it to enhance your swing, not be a new swing. And I use that a lot in my videos. I say these kind of words a lot. Influence is key. We're trying to influence what you do naturally and normally to change subtly and quietly to make you be able to perform from day one on the golf course and drop those scores turn those bogeys into pars, double bogeys into bogeys, and reduce those scores by units, weekly, monthly, and progress nicely to enjoy your golf more and be a happier golfer.